Let's take a step back from natural language processing and language understanding, and maybe talk about algorithms in general. And just for argument's sake, let's say that I am working in some sort of a fraud department. Let's say that I'm working at a local tax office, and I'm here to build a system that indicates whether or not a account needs to be researched, whether or not it's risky. Then there are many ways to go about it. There's many algorithms that I could consider. But I could make the argument that perhaps it's pragmatic to not think about machine learning immediately. Now let's assume that the use case is that I have some data about someone who just filed their, let's say, tax application. And I need to figure out if extra attention needs to be given to this particular application. Well then, maybe I can come up with a good heuristic without even thinking too much about machine learning and data. What I could do is I could say, well, if you're a child, and if at the same time your income is larger than $100,000 a year, well, then I would say that feels a bit fishy. Let's check that. And similarly, I think it's pretty safe to say that if you have more than, let's say, 10 bank accounts, that this would also be fishy. It feels fine to just double check that. And when you think about this problem, I hope you would agree that you can actually come up with a bunch of these rules. And that's because what I'm describing here are pretty clear and cut cases. I wouldn't want to suggest that every rule that I add here covers every possible instance out there, but I will be comfortable maybe putting this into production. Every rule here is valid. But because it doesn't cover every instance, probably what I will need to do is after I've checked if one of these rules applies, then I can say, well, finally, if none of these rules apply, then maybe we should hand it to a machine learning model. And then the machine learning model can say, well, definitely check or don't check. So I hope you might look at this and think this is reasonably sensible. We have a couple of pretty clear cases and only if none of those apply, then we can resort to this machine learning model to maybe figure out some of the harder instances. And in particular, what's really nice about this is that for these pretty easy cases that I have over here, note that I don't necessarily need an example of data in order for me to declare that a rule is sensible. A downside of this machine learning model, besides being harder to interpret, is also that typically it needs plenty of data examples in order for it to pick up a pattern. One nice aspect of these rules is that you can just declare them even if you don't have an example for them. Now, taking a step back again and looking what I have over here, there's things to like. To be honest, you can get quite far without resorting to any machine learning in this particular use case. Because you have domain knowledge about the underlying system, you can already make some appropriate choices without even worrying too much about datasets. Now, to emphasize, I do think it's a pretty good idea to have a machine learning model over here. That way, we have a system that can take over if none of our clear rules apply, but not everything needs to be done with machine learning. And if I think about this in practice, there are really some benefits to doing this. It's an easy starting point if you have domain knowledge. It's pretty easy to adjust as you learn more information because you can always add more rules. And it also gives you a level of interpretability to your system. The main risk though, and that is something to take serious, is that we can overdo these rules. Rules could get complex, but we can limit the risk of that by considering a rule-based system that is very much in the style of if this, then that, and don't consider anything else. We are not considering a nested rule-based structure where depending on the if statement that we had earlier, we have to look up in a tree what decision to make. If we stay clear from this idea and just stick to the simple rule-based system like I've drawn above, then I can argue the merits of this design, of this system, so to say. Now, what I'm trying to get at here is that these rules can be seen as a very convenient addition to a machine learning model. I don't want to suggest that these rules will ever replace machine learning, but I do want to say that they can really play well together. And it might just be adding these rules that makes it much easier to go to production. And that's because 
A system that's more interpretable is also easier to change as time moves on and as you learn more about your use case. Now, keep this idea in mind, because it's going to end up being very useful when we start talking about handling conversations. So what I have here is a text editor with a terminal running below and a configuration file that has a story defined. You might recognize this story. We've seen it before in a previous episode of this playlist. But what I'm describing here is how a conversation could have gone with this assistant. We had a user that was making it clear that they wanted to greet. We greeted back. And then this assistant can do a countdown. So what this user wants is a countdown to start. We start at 10, that's an action. Then we confirm. Then we are at 9. and. This file, in essence, describes what intents and actions follow each other. And it's important to observe that this is different than natural language understanding. Now, I just want to point one thing out. Predicting the next action in general is pretty hard. In Raza, we have these NLU models, and they can predict the intent as well as the entities that you have in a bit of text. But these models typically only handle one utterance at a time. We have different models that don't concern themselves with predicting the intent, but instead they want to predict the next action. And doing that right is tricky. Predicting the next best predicting the next action to take doesn't just depend on the intent you have right now. It also depends on everything that's happened in the conversation so far. And we have machine learning systems that are designed to handle this. In particular, we've got this transformer architecture called TED that can take these intents and entities, as well as the conversation so far, and it will then predict the next action to take. But the way that TED works is it looks at these training files in order to make the next prediction of what to do. And just to demonstrate that this is hard, I would like to zoom in on this one particular example. This file has lots of stories. Here's one. And there's a couple of them. And what you'll notice is that all of these stories tend to be quite long. And that's because we're counting down, we start at 10, and then we have to get all the way down to one before the conversation ends. There's a few stories in here, but one thing to observe. Usually, the user would say goodbye at the end of a very long conversation. And it could very well be that the stories file that you have doesn't have an example where a user greets, has a short conversation, and then says goodbye. It might very well be the case that saying goodbye in your example dataset only happens at the bottom of a very long conversation. Unfortunately, that also means that a machine learning system like TED might pick that up as a pattern. It might consider that saying goodbye is something that happens only after fully doing the countdown and not something that can happen before doing a countdown. And I actually have an example running locally that demonstrates that it will have trouble doing this. If I were to type hello here, it says hey back. And if immediately I were to say goodbye, it's just confused. Now, there's a couple of reasons why we see this output. Part of the reason has to do with the fact that this is a slightly artificial data set. In this data set, I only have one example of goodbye and that's happening after a very, very long conversation. And it also deserves mentioning that you might be able to circumvent some of the issues by tuning the hyperparameters here a bit. But let's forget about these details for just a moment and remember what we saw in the previous example. Maybe there's something to be said that we don't want to handle this particular use case with machine learning. If I see the intent goodbye, then I might argue that this is a pretty clear and cut example where I might not need machine learning in order to know what the next best action should be. There might be a really good opportunity here to use a rule-based system to help us. And as of Raza 2.0, you are now able to do exactly this. And here's how it works. The idea is that whenever you get a new text, it goes through the NLU pipeline, and then you have your intents and entities. You typically also have your conversation so far that contains data, that can be used by policy mechanisms like TED. 
As of Vraza 2.0 though, what we also have is a rule-based policy. And the idea behind this rule policy is that it will look at the data coming in, and if it turns out it's a clear and cut case, it will just handle the policy by following a rule, and only when the rules don't apply, that's when it will pass it through to another policy mechanism like TED. So effectively for this use case, what that allows us to do is it allows us to write down a rule that's along the lines of if we see that the intent is goodbye, then just utter goodbye as the next action. Just like before, this is a pretty clear rule that we can define such that we don't have to preoccupy ourselves with anything that happened in the conversation so far. Because simply put, if somebody's saying goodbye, then this is the appropriate response. We don't need a machine learning algorithm to figure this out. So then it's simply just more practical to define this as a rule. So how do you go about making these rules in Raza? The main thing that you have to do is you have to add this rules.yaml file. And inside of this file, you can define a rule. The rule in this case is very simple. If we ever see this intent happen, then this is the appropriate action to take. And the only thing we have to do now is make sure that we have a rule policy defined in our configuration.yaml file as well. And this should be enough for us to retrain everything and to see if the goodbye case is now handled appropriately. So there we go, everything's trained. I can type hello. And when I now say goodbye, nice. So it's nice that this works and hopefully you recognize the merits of this idea, but I'm only really scratching the surface here. So in the upcoming videos, I will give some demonstrations of how you might be able to add custom machine learning models as a rule.